In IB chemistry, when you're writing a DCP lab, it's important that you represent any uncertainty that you make in measurements or that you make during a calculation. One of the tools that can help you do this is a spreadsheet. I've created this spreadsheet in Excel, though any spreadsheet program can do all of the functions that we're looking at today. I've created a place to record a measurement, its relative uncertainty, and then a place where I'm going to put percent uncertainties once I calculate them. That'll be our first step with measurements. If I want to multiply or divide two measurements, remember I have to know the percent uncertainties I'm working with, not just relative uncertainties. So first I need some dummy values to work with. I'll use values from the periodic table just because they're comfortable for us. 14.01 uh, is the mass of nitrogen from the periodic table in grams per mole. Um, oh, 35.45, that's for chlorine. These are just some comfortable numbers to work with. 12.01 for carbon, because we all love carbon. Now, our periodic tables that we're working with in class all have an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01 grams per mole. So I'll write that for each one, 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Now let's say these are measurements in the lab and I'd like to multiply or divide them. The very first thing I have to do before I multiply or divide them is find their percent uncertainty. I can't just multiply or divide relative uncertainty. So to find those, I'm going to create a formula that finds my percent. To create a formula in Excel, you hit an equal sign. That indicates to the program that you're getting ready to make it do some math for you. And what I want is to have the relative uncertainty in this case it's in space B2, divided by, so I'll type that slash sign, the 14.01 initial measurement. And because it's a percent that I'm looking at, times 100. That's one of the ways of dealing with percent in Excel. There are some others. And then I'm going to hit enter, and that tells it that I'm done with that cell. And what I've discovered is that 0 0.07 is the percent uncertainty of 14.01 that's equivalent to the relative uncertainty of 0 0.01. I can use this number if I want to do any sort of math later on. I'd like to do that for all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the cell where I wrote the formula. And you can see the formula is rewritten up here in the formula bar. And I'm just going to drag that box downward. And in doing so, I copy the formula. And I have it use the values that are from each row along with it. If I had several measurements that I was working with, I could put them all into this column, continue to drag that down, and it would do just the same. And this gives me percent uncertainties to work with. Now, if I need to multiply those numbers, I'm going to copy them over here to work with. It'll give me a little bit of room to work with, and it guarantees I won't mess with my formula later. So I'm just going to copy, Control-C, and paste, and Control-C, and Control-V, Control-C, and Control-V. That part was easy because they're just numbers. This percent uncertainty part is a little different. I can copy it normally, but I don't want to copy the formula. I just want to copy that number value. So I'm going to right click and paste special. And from here, instead of pasting a formula or equation, I'm going to place, just paste the value, the number value there. And I'll do the same thing here. We'll see. I could do several cells at once, but this lets you look at several different options. So here, right click special, boom, control C, right click, paste special, and now I've got the numbers over here, and I'd like to multiply them and have the answers report over here with the percent uncertainty. So what I'm going to do to multiply all of those three numbers that I'd like to multiply is I'll hit an equal sign, and I can take the numbers that I want times this one, times this one, and then hit enter. And that has calculated 14.01 times 35.45 times 12.01. It hasn't done anything with the uncertainty yet, and that's the last part. Remember, I have to add those uncertainties together to get the percent uncertainty. So I'm going to add them. There's a trick for adding. There's one for multiplying, too. But for adding, I'm going to hit the equal and then sum, let's make that in caps, for some reason I'm more comfortable with that. And then in parentheses, I will select all those things I wanted to add together. And, uh, oh, pardon me, quotes, not parentheses. And I'll hit return. And that adds up all of those percent uncertainties. So if I take these numbers and multiply them, 
and I take into account their uncertainties, I get the answer of 5,964.820545 plus or minus 0.18285%. We typically don't leave our uncertainty reported as percent. Typically, we report it as a relative uncertainty, like our initial measurements. So to do that, I'm going to have to go backwards of what we did for our percent uncertainty. From relative to percent, remember we divided and then multiplied times 100. Here I'm going to set it up a little bit different. I'm going to take my percent uncertainty, percent uncertainty, and I'm going to divide that by 100 this time, divide it by 100, and then take that times my main value, and then hit return. And that gives me a plus or minus value of 10.9. So really my measurement value after I've done multiplying those, if I were using significant figures, I could report that as, let's see, 5965 to have four significant figures, plus or minus, in this case, 11, or plus or minus 10, because we only report to one significant figure. And that would be my relative uncertainty. That's one of the ways we can use a spreadsheet to make your uncertainty measurements a little bit easier. If you need help setting this up, let me know. If you need help working with the formulas, let me know. I'd be glad to work with you. Or there are a million tutorials online. But this is one of the ways of just having a, a spreadsheet handy to double check your calculations. I hope that helps.